the other day I lost my glasses. These glasses are, uh, are a pretty mild prescription. My eyesight is not so bad that it's really dramatic when I take the glasses off. So there are times I don't really wear them in the morning until I leave to take Maddie to school. But the other day I realized as I was leaving, I dropped her off at school and I realized as I was driving away that uh, I didn't have my glasses on. So I run back to the house and they're not on my nightstand and they're not in any of the places where I would normally put them. And so I sort of calmly thought about when was the last time I had the glasses, tried to retrace my step, think about when the, the last time I could remember having them was, and eventually I tracked them down. And I share that because I wanna contrast that with what happens when my daughter Maddie loses something. Uh, basically, at the first tiny possibility that something is not where she thought it was, she immediately freaks out and is basically convinced that she'll never see it again. Um, now, this kid, I'm very organized. I was not particularly organized as a kid, so I still have hope for her. But this kid definitely does not like have a strong sense of put things in the same place every day and then you'll know where they are. She leaves things around, so, so it's not uncommon that she is losing things. And yet every time it happens, it is like the end of the world. And so we're trying to calmly say, when was the last time you saw it? Where, where could it be? Where are some of the places you've used it? And because we know that the thing she's looking for is probably real close by, it's probably in the house, it's probably not lost forever. And something similar happens to us sometimes when we're analyzing information at work. Sometimes our inner nine-year-old comes out and we're either looking at incomplete information and drawing the wrong conclusions because it's not enough information or we are allowing our feelings and our emotions to color the information. And this happens to me a lot. I'm a pretty emotional person. I'm pretty in touch with my feelings. And so it's not uncommon for me to have to really be disciplined about saying, what is the objective truth about these facts and not what do I feel about them? And that's a difficult thing for most people because most of us, our, our feelings color objective facts all the time and we don't really notice it. But for people like me who are more influenced by their feelings, it's, it's definitely a challenge sometimes to separate what I feel about the facts or what I feel about the information from what is actually true about it. So the next time that you are feeling your inner nine-year-old come out, when you're feeling a strong visceral reaction to some information, it would be good to either find someone to coach you like I do for Maddie, or to be able to walk yourself through a process of, of separating the emotion from the facts, of saying, what is true about this for real? To be able to walk through the process of saying, what is true about this separate from my emotion? And the emotion may actually be valuable, but it's good to understand which part is emotion and which part is facts.